Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bakis of the Lotri Foundation. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. وزدنا يا مولانا بفضلك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين. So we are in the hikam of Shaykh Ibn Ta'illah رحمة عليه. Covered 138 uh, yesterday. Uh, 138 that we covered yesterday. Uh, Shaykh Ibn Ta'ilah was talking about the um, he was talking about the uh, manifestation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, in His creation. That there has to be there with the believer, if he want the believer uh, has to see uh, the one who is going forward and who is on a path of closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that what this believer who's on this path we talked about why someone which should be on a path meaning a path of wanting closeness to Allah wanting to understand uh, one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to deepen one's love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we talked about uh, and so he says uh, Shaykh ibn Ta'illah uh, he said uh, yesterday about this, uh, about the uh, the appearance or uh, of the maqawwinat, the outward manifestation of things that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, created, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, has to parent in it, uh, that eyesight would conceive of of it, that eyesight, the hijab, the veils uh, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be lifted and not blocked because of the uh, because of outward manifestations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And the second part, walau uh, dhaharat sifatuhu, if the uh, if the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, became uh, apparent or is appears the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the outward manifestations of things would just uh, it would make it would make it would lead one back to Allah and it would disappear meaning that one would not become deluded by the outward manifestations of things one would not be deluded by the fact that this is in its shape in the in the shekel of things, in the surah of things, in the fact that things look like a certain way, that may become attractive to the eyes, that one becomes deluded by it, by it itself, but rather that one, those things and those manifestations of beauty, or those manifestations of uh, of extreme uh, uh, majest uh, of, of of majesty of the things that Allah has created, that it leads one back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It leads one back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that when you look at and you're, and you're, awestruck, by, uh, you're awestruck by the creation, you're awestruck by the creation, awestruck by a sun setting, or you're awestruck by uh, a forest of trees that you know, stands, you know, the redwood forest in, in the west coast, or you're awestruck by the magnificent uh, creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in the sea, the whales and so on and so forth, that it leads one back to the Creator. And so one becomes awestruck by the Creator. One has khashya, and one says, SubhanAllah, look at the creation of Allah, that it leads one back to that. Instead of just, instead of just admiring the beauty for the sake of beauty, and there are people who admire beauty just for the sake of beauty, just for the sake of beauty. And, but that doesn't, that's tangible and that can leave, that can leave. You can forget about 
uh, about those things after a while. You can forget about because it stays on the outward and it doesn't impact the heart. It doesn't impact the exterior. Once you see the manifestations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes in those things, what manifestation of when you're awestruck by the beauty of something, what what manifestation of what Allah's what 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 is Allah's attribute? Allah's attribute of, of the that He is beautiful. In Allah Jamilan wa yuhibbu Jamal. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Prophet Sallallahu said what? He says in Allah Jamilan that verily Allah is uh, is beautiful, outstandingly. Meaning that there's nothing in comparison to Allah. Allah kamithli shay. It takes that that understanding that nothing the perfection is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even the perfection of creation is is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can create or make something more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done in his creation no one and so that manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa being beautiful yuhibbu jamal Allah subhanahu wa loves beauty because he loves beauty he creates in perfection and so the being awestruck by the by the muqawwanat being awestruck by the creation of Allah what does it do it helps you to it helps the believer the one who has eyesight the one who has basira insight and not just look plainly because with the eyes and look at the shapes and the colors and the forms of things but actually goes beyond it and looks at what is behind it looks at what is behind it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, sifat is behind it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that he's creating it and that he created his imperfection is behind it. And so one becomes awestruck to the Lord, to the Khaliq. One becomes awestruck with the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the one who creates it. And so when one becomes awestruck by the, by the creator of those things, then one is less likely to become deluded by those things. One is less likely to become deluded by those things. If one once equates it back to the Creator. One once equates it back to the Creator. And we can, we can extend it to anything that, that, Allah, anything of that, uh, that occurs in this world, even praises. We can extend it to even to even people praising one, or peeping, people uh, uh, celebrating some accomplishment, or rewarding you for, or rewarding you with something of an accomplishment. We can extend it even there, that it's due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone compliments you because of a skill set that you have, or someone compliments you because of of a look that you have, or someone compliments you because of something that you did, or something that you accomplished, that you can put it into perspective that it's Allah who is deservant of the gratitude. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is deservant of the praise, because it's Allah who has created it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the, your tongue, or it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the particular way of articulating things. Or it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the mind to embolden things. Or it's Allah who has created the mind to memorize things. Or to connect things. Or it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the, the perfection of that beauty or that skill set or that knowledge to you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has. And so the so putting any any <clears throat> praises, any accomplishments, any awards, and so on and so forth, is then equated back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then it leaves the servant humbled. Humbled at what? Humbled at the fact that, that it's Allah who is being recognized, not one. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is ultimate being recognized. And so when you, when you look, when you see Ruf al when you travel the earth and you see the splendor or the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is being praised. Through what? Through the, manifest, through the, through the, uh, the manifestation of His beauty. The manifestation of the beauty of His creation. It's Allah who is being praised. 
that manifestations of Allah's beauty is in the eyes of that beholder. The eyes of that beholder being connected to the heart. The eyes of the beholder and his connecting his eyes to his heart so that it filters. That it filters. What is filter? That, that beauty is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, what Allah has deemed beautiful, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in perfection. What Allah has created in perfection. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has deemed to be ugly, then that is deemed, that is also filtered. Sinfulness is deemed to be, to be ugly. It's deemed to be ugly. That itself would cause the eye to sway from that ugliness. So once you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the displeasure of Allah is in a person acting like this or doing this or saying this, then the eyes or the senses are then swayed automatically from it because the heart filters it. The heart filters it. Once the heart is in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, in, and the heart has that, uh, that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the heart is able to filter what comes in through the senses. The heart is able to filter it. And the heart is able to say that is not good or that is disgusting or that is not pleasurable. And one diverts one's senses away from it. One diverts one's eyesight away from it. Or one diverts one <coughs> hearing away from it. Or one diverts oneself from it by walking away. Because it is deemed unpleasurable. Even if on the exterior it looks beautiful. Even if on the exterior it sounds like something you want to hear. But because it leads to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then one diverts it away. What helps in the diversion is the heart. That's what helps. It's the heart that, that essentially helps to divert those matters away or at least averts the eyesight away from, uh, from falling victim to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll manifest his attributes. Sifatuhu, he'll manifest his attributes in the creation. In the creation. And when he manifests his, his attributes in the creation, it is in order for you to be led back to the creator. It is in order for you to be led back to the creator. And when you're led back to the Creator through the out to the manifestation of His attributes, then what then is this? What then should the servant do? What should the servant do? What the servant do should do is then praise Allah. The servant is left to do what? Praise Allah. The servant is left to be in awe of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The servant is left to be amazed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. To have khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khashya is different than khawf. Khawf is, is a fear of, of an exterior, of an outward, of something of a, of, that Allah has will do or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish. Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give. Khashya is an awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majesty or, Allah, uh, or an awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. An awe of it. That it's referential fear, the fear that uh, that is caused out of out of uh, out of reverence for something, extreme reverence for something, or the extreme reverence and nobility of something that Allah has caused, or or that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, that you see the effects of it, of Allah's creation in it, and so. When one sees the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation or understands and sees it, understands it, have insight of it, that one leads one to have greater khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It leads one to have greater uh, awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what then happens when one has awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That what happens is that one wants to stay far away from disobedience to Allah. One wants to say what? Far away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it wanes. And then it wanes. It diminishes. And it diminishes. And it diminishes. Until one is off, 
until one is caught again by seeing something that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beauty being manifested or his majesty being manifested or his uh, or his mercy being manifested and then one is caught again in that awe and when one is caught in that awe one then wants to stay far away from disobedience and then it wanes again and then it diminishes and then it diminishes until one is caught again when one works on one's uh, basira when one wa- works on that connection of the senses to the heart then the moments of being in the state of khashya then increases the moments and if the moments increase then the then that uh, that want of staying away from disobedience increases it increases and when it wanes it doesn't wane for too long it doesn't diminish for too long it won't diminish and it won't lessen for too long but one has to have that uh, that connection and one has to have the, the strength of eyesight one has to have the strength of eyesight and the strength of ear, uh, of uh, the strength of of see the strength of insight to understand it and one has to look and see and look at and see at the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look and see the uh, the beauty of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent even if one is even if one is perplexed by it or it becomes difficult to deal like snow falling like a tremendous amount of snow or tre- or or a or you know the shiddat al bar the the severeness of coldness one can have a khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it because there's an infinite beauty in it there's an infinite beauty because of the of the tremendousness of it that it leads one to know that there's a creator who has created this there's a creator who has created this and there's creator who this is in some ways it is a form of mercy snow falling is a form of mercy because it replenishes the water supplies of the earth it replenishes the moisture of the earth as it falls mm-hmm. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is one of the precipitation in any form precipitation in any form is an act of is can be a form of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fanzur ila athari rahmatillah kayfa yuhyi al-ard ba'da mawtiha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at how, look at the athar, rahmatullah, look at the, the traces of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the traces of His mercy. The trace of His mercy is what Allah has allowed you to see of His mercy. What Allah subhanahu has allowed you to see. That leads you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at the traces of Allah's mercy look at how he brings the earth back to life after causing its death look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala springs the earth back to life hmm? or how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replenishes life how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replenishes things or life after causing its death look at that so that one is then led back to that ultimateness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is his his ultimate this is his creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates in perfection, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings even weather, weather patterns, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to show His majesty and to show that He's in charge. To show that He's in charge. We're not in charge. We may want warm climate, we may want warmth, we may want sunshine, we may want less of this or less of that. Weather like this, Allah demonstrates to us that He's in charge. Subhanallah. That's what weather like this determines to us. And it should determine that it's Allah who's in charge. A khalif. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's in charge. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of it, then we have submission to Him. Then we have submission to Him. Then we submit to what Allah has, has given, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided, what Allah has, has brought forth. We submit to it. And in that submission then is, in that submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in charge of it, 
There is where you'll find the beauty of it. There is where you'll find beauty. You will find beauty in the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrating his power and demonstrating that he is in charge. There you will find the beauty. So even, even, in, the, even in the severe coldness or in the severe weather like what we've been having, there is a beauty in it. There is. There's a beauty in it. And it's for the servant to find that beauty. And this is what Shaykh Ibn Ta'ala talked about is in the second part of the hikmah from yesterday. It talks about that, the manifestation of the, of, the, of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there is. There is a manifestation of that attribute. There is an apparentness of the attributes of Allah. One just has to, one just has to uh, correct one's eyesight to know it and then connect the senses to the heart to see it so that one, the heart increases in reverence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what, with what one sees in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and forgive us, have mercy upon us, forgive our elders, our parents, give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our, protect our parents, our elders, May Allah subhanahu wa those who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa grant them his mercy, his makhir, and his shade. Those who are sick or ailing, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cure them, heal them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit them through uh, the medication that they may take or, the, uh, or any of the therapy that they may be having or, or treatments that they may be going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this successful for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children, keep on the straight path. Make our footing strong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of our matters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of the matters of the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, facilitate it with ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause success to their matters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and forgive us. Increase us in knowledge and practice of our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sincere servants to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us beloved servants. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to accept uh, the qadr of what he sends to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Forgive and protect and provide assistance to those who are in need of assistance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes amongst the homes of the believers. Make our last words and deeds our very best. Subhanahu wa hamdik shadu wa la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa natubi ilaik. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidah Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.